Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Let my whole being bless the Lord. Let everything inside me bless his holy name. Let my whole being bless the Lord and never forget all his good deeds. How God forgives all of our sins. How he heals all of our sickness. Saves us. Gives us life from the pit. Crowns us with faithful love and compassion and satisfies us with plenty of good things so that our youth is made fresh like an eagle's. I just quoted Psalms 103 verses 1 through 5 because certainly we are grateful to the Lord for another opportunity to be with you guys. And as always, we are grateful for our listener support. And just in case, and just in case you miss part one of our session, our Q&A session, we answered some questions that pertain to the Word of God. Because I believe that this is essential in order to grow in the Lord. Because when you can rest on the reliability and the trustworthiness of his standards, you can confidently defend your faith because of your personal success when God's word is applied. So at this time, people of God, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to answer three more questions concerning God's word. And so just in case you didn't know, this week we are focusing on having a question and answer session. And so we've already released part one. You can catch this on any of the podcast platforms. We're now into part two of our Q&A session. Questions and answers. And it's coming from Full of Life Ministries. So question number one, and this is a very, very popular question. And the question is, who created God? (laughs) I'm going to say that one more time. Who created God? This is the mystery that intrigues and mystifies many of us because God is not tangible. You know, he's not an object, nor is he a structure or an exhibit that's displayed for all of mankind to behold. Simply put, he is like no other. He's outside of time, He's outside of space and he's outside of matter. Outside of time. He's outside of space and he's outside of matter. He's everywhere, believe it or not, at the same time. He's omniscient. He has complete or maximum knowledge of everything. And Psalms 147 verse 5 tells us, Our Lord is great and so strong. God's knowledge can't be grasped. (laughs) And this is the mystery. This is that thing of, well, where did God come from? Who created God? That is something that When we get to heaven, we'll have more time to spend with God. Where did you come from? (laughs) I don't think we'll be talking about that when we get to heaven. Amen. But it is hard to apprehend or comprehend where God came from. 
You see, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 20, it tells us, even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. He's, he's so great because he knows all things. And so he's omniscient and he's omnipresent. He's omniscient, but that doesn't answer who created him. Well, we have to embrace this mystery that God is eternal and never had a beginning. No one created God. He was never created. He has always existed. Hmm. Because the Lord our God is the only being or human being with an eternal and unchanging nature. Let that sink in. People of God, every person has a beginning and an end. But God is eternal. <laughs> we have a beginning and we have an end. But God is eternal. Now, Psalms 90 verse 2 tells us, before the mountains were born, before you came into the earth and inhabit, inhabited the world, from forever in the past to forever in the future, in the future, you are God. That's powerful when you think about that. Before the mountains were here, before we were birthed into this earth, when we actually lived in this earth, he was always here. He will be here forever. There is no end to God. And in Isaiah 43rd chapter, the 10th verse, it tells us, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, my servant, whom I chose, so that you would know and believe me and understand that I am the one. Before me, no God was formed. After me, there has been no other. So if we say that somebody created God, then God could never be eternal. And there's no viable proof of such being. So the reality is, he always was. He is outside of time. He's outside of space. And he's outside of matter. If he were part of time and part of space and part of matter, he would not be God because he's eternal. He always was. He has no beginning, he has no end. He's just God forever. So he. He was the beginning, and he will continue to be with us forever and ever. Number two, what is the Trinity and why is the word Trinity not in the Bible? You see, people of God, the term Trinity is a term that's, that is designed to teach that God exists as a unity of three distinct persons. God the Father. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Each of these persons, each of the persons is distinct from the other, yet they are co-equal, co-eternal in essence. Each person of the Trinity is fully divine in nature, 
but each is not the totality of the other persons of the Trinity. So each person of the Trinity has a will, they love, and it says, I and you when speaking. The Father is not the same person as the Son, who is not the same person as the Holy Spirit, and who is not the same person as the Father. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is divine. Yet they are not three gods, but one God in nature in three persons. There are three individual substances or persons. Now listen, in uh, St. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, it tells us, When Jesus was baptized, he immediately, now I want you guys to catch this, when Jesus, that's number one, Jesus in the Godhead was baptized, he immediately came out of the water, the heavens opened up to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. So that's the Holy Spirit. It's number two. A voice from heaven said, this is my son, there's God, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. One God, three distinct persons, all unified, co-equal, co-eternal. Second Corinthians 13th chapter and the 14th verse says, I believe the 13th verse, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to read that verse one more time. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Each of the persons is distinct from the other, yet they are co-equal, co-eternal in essence. And first Peter, first chapter in the second verse tells us, according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in fullness, in the fullest measure. That's the demonstration of the Trinity. Yes, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but there's other words that are not in the Bible, that, that are not in the Bible. We don't make a big deal about it. Jehovah Witnesses love to use this and say, well, Trinity is not in the Bible, but there's the word Jehovah is not in the Bible. But yet we believe that God is God. So there is a Trinity. There's a triune God. He's one in person, but he. He moves in three persons. God, the father, God, the son. God, the Holy Spirit. And number three, is the Holy Spirit a person? Let me answer that real quick. Yes, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Spirit is always regarded as He and not it. I want to say that one more time. The Holy Spirit is always regarded as He and not it. The Holy Spirit is not a force, it's not a wind, but it is a person. It's not a wave of electricity. He, the Holy Spirit, is a person, the third person in the Trinity. And St. John chapter 14, verse 26 tells us, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name. Now here's the key. It says he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. This is Jesus talking to the multitude, not talking to the multitude, talking to the disciples. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 tells us, Because you too have heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, and because you believe in the one who is truth, your lives are marked with a seal. This is none other than the Holy Spirit who was promised. St. John chapter 14 verse 17 tells us, The world does not recognize the spirit of truth because it does not know the spirit and is unable to receive him. But you do know the Spirit because He lives with you and He will dwell with you. Yes, the Holy Spirit is a person. And so in closing, we thank you for your questions. And we hope and pray that this is a basic layout of understanding to help you Trust in the Lord with all, with all of your heart, never leaning to your own understanding. But in all your ways, simply acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So people of God, if you have any other questions concerning scripture, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com once again full of life sd at gmail.com you can find us on twitter you can find us on instagram so people of god we thank you for the questions we thank you for your support we're going to just allow god's word to lead and guide us because his words are without no error. There's no error in God's word. Let us apply God's word to our everyday life. And when we do, great things will happen for your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of your many blessings. Heavenly Father, we just ask that these sessions that we are doing that people will now turn to your word. That they will believe in your word. That they will come to the conclusion that your words are trustworthy. And that we can go to the bank on your words. Because your word brings life and light. Because your scripture says the interest the entrance of your word gives light and life. So, Lord God, I pray for every listener under the sound of my voice that they will embrace your word, that they will now be confident and bold in faith to step out on your word, to not lean to their own understanding, and that they will distrust what you have to say. It's going to work out for their good. We ask all these blessings in Jesus name. We pray. Amen and amen. People of God, thank you for tuning in this week. We love you with the love of Christ. Please pray for us as we pray for you. And let's continue to do this in Jesus name. God bless. <laughs>